Hello and welcome to the match day vlog and it's Watford taking on table toppers Leeds United at Vicarage Road and it's the EFL Championship Easter weekend. Yes, it's Good Friday and hopefully it will be a good Friday for the Golden Boys as they take on table toppers Leeds United managed by Daniel Farker and oh my days what a job he has done. The former Norwich manager has absolutely smashed it at the Yorkshire side and they are facing a rejuvenated, hopefully, Watford side with Cleverley at the helm. Yes, Tom Cleverley after he was appointed interim head coach after the absolute debacle, um, the loss and the embarrassment um, of the recent weeks, the game against Coventry. Um, it's just been an absolute mess. Uh, I think there was the Swansea game as well, where it just did, didn't look very uh, good at all. And so they sacked Mr. Valerian Ishmael. And this is what Pozzo does. We are not surprised by it anymore. It just, yeah, it gets to a point where, as Watford fans, we run out of energy and we just don't see any sort of, um, any sort of, surprise from it it's all just part of the furniture now and it's the way that we operate but it is a bit exhausting um, it's another season of disappointment where we're just not quite hitting the pre-season expectations we're just kind of drifting through the gears a little bit and kind of just through the motions another mediocre season another season where you think there's a point when Watford is starting to build towards something, starting to buy a, an identity back, and Valerian Ishmael did brilliantly to create the environment for that. He got them playing some great football. They were actually playing with the badge and showing a passion and identity. You had experienced players like Livermore. Um, you had Ben Hamer doing well in goal after Backman, you know, didn't have a, the best of performances at times. And then it just all went a bit sour and yet again Watford just not showing enough consistency so Valerian got the sack I mean we, we were on a winless run of about seven in a row I think and it was just not working it was not clicking something unfortunately was bound to change and yeah in comes a man who knows a lot a lot about the club it's Mr Tom Cleverley uh genuine down-to-earth humble guy who has played on multiple occasions for the Hornets back when he was 1920 but also he came back a second spell and you know he's one of the fan favorites let's say for cleverly he's been very unlucky in his career with injuries obviously fantastic achievements at Manchester United uh, was good at Everton obviously had time at Wigan as well um, Aston Villa as well um, so as you can imagine, uh, as a former villain, uh, to see his side win the match, a crucial kind of must not lose, but especially a must win against Birmingham City last time out before the international break. And we got the job done. It was a pretty scrappy win, scrappy performance, but Emmanuel Dennis with the only goal. And yeah, maybe it was a bit of a pass on a plate to him, but he still did well to finish past John Ruddy. And yeah, it was it was a workmanlike performance, uh, but it was all about the three points. It didn't matter how we got it, up to 48 points. So you'd hope after that result that we're in a position where it would be difficult to get back in relegation trouble. Um, it's funny, actually, at the start of the season, how we you know had that game, I think it was against Sheffield Wednesday early on in the season, and we won that. And after winning that, we kind of got ourselves a little bit out of the relegation uh, problems, but it's funny that now we're thinking we're safe. But this has the, been the kind of reality of this season: is that we were hoping for promotion through the playoffs, but it's been flirting with relegation at times. It's been it's been quite hard to get some consistency from this Watford side. But what I want to see tonight, after you know quite a battling and spirited uh, win against Birmingham City I want to see more of the same I want to see a side who knows that there might be nothing to play for yet again this season but I want us to give us fans hope for the future I want us to 
even against teams who are pretty much looking to um, get back automatic spot into the Premier League after relegation last season, this is a sort of game that, you know, Watford players, why wouldn't they be up for? Because it's very much essentially a free hit. It's a nothing to lose. You've got a game here against a very decent side in Leeds. You know, players like Crescencio Somerville, players like Daniel James, whose Wales side were knocked out um, in the penalty shootout to Poland in midweek. You've got players like Joel Pirot, who scored in the reverse fixture. You've got players, obviously Bamford has been in and out that side, you know, mostly doing podcasts with his uh, uh, footballer friend. But, you know, this is the thing. Leeds have got very, very good players and, you know, they're just a dangerous, dangerous side for anyone. There's no doubting it. Obviously, you had the likes of Jaden Anthony scoring the reverse fixture against us, um, as did Sam Byram. You know, it's a very solid side they've got there. Ethan Ampadu as well, who's been a fantastic signing from them. Um, so, so many players that can cause you problems. Um, and we really have to be wary about Leeds this this uh, evening because it's a team that can hit you for a few goals. We know that, you know, scoring is their speciality. Um, and we know that in the past, games, especially at Vicarage Road against Leeds, have been painful. Um, in the reverse game, we got walloped 3-0 back in Vicarage Road, the Premier League season where we were absolutely awful um, and we got relegated uh, under Ranieri and uh, Hodgson and um, Cisco. That season, we got battered 3-0. Um, Harrison scored. We had Rodrigo um, and a goal from Rafinha. So it's not exactly been a fond fixture recently, but there were times in the championship pre um, kind of that Kike season where, you know, we beat Leeds at home um, with the likes of Matty Vidra helping in uh, and chipping in. We obviously beat them in the FA Cup um, all those years ago when we got to the semi-final and lost to Palace. But we beat them with their own goal. So there's times we've beaten this Leeds side. It feels a while back, but there has been times. And I know that this side are a much better Leeds side than that than that was before. But, but we have to go into this with no fear as much as possible and just attack this and just play front foot football. And I think with Cleverly, he certainly won't want to go into this and give too much respect to Leeds. I think he's definitely the sort of interim head coach who won't have his players just rolling over and saying, you're Leeds United, we'll give you respect, we'll give you time on the ball to just dictate this. Remember, we're the home side. We have to play like that. We haven't played like that for a long time because our home form this season has been pretty atrocious. The win against QPR on the opening day is pretty much one of the main highlights. And it was a bit like the season prior, um, you know, not a lot at home. The season before that, you had about one or two great wins in the Premier League season, including that opening day win against Aston Villa. So, you know, we have to really show more consistency at home. In the past, it's always been the issue that we've not shown enough cojones away from home. But nowadays, it's we have to really make teams scared going to Vicarage Road and, and dictate the, the the tempo of the game, create chances and and take them ultimately. So, yeah, this is a big game just for the fans to feel a bit of optimism going into next season, knowing that maybe, just maybe, we can, you know, do it with the big boys of the championship and really make a statement tonight above anything else. Um, team news tonight, I think the main thing is that semmer has been in and out of the team for a long time, but... I don't think he's going to make this one. Um, he's had his injuries um, recently. It's been a bit of a concern um, because he's the sort of player for a game like this we would have loved. Um, also, we've got a few kind of players coming back from international break. It's great to see that Chak uh got his uh, got his international break. Also, Espria scoring on international duty for Colombia, so that was great. Um, and also, you know, a few other players getting call ups. And what I would say is. Let's see a bit of a bit of passion tonight, a bit of creativity down those wings. You know, we've had a lot of issues with, you know, the fullbacks not creating many chances for the players in the box. But if we are going to start Rajevic, give him the service. Let the king deliver, all right? Because he can the he can, you know, be clinical if you give him the service. Just give it to him. But if we start bio, then that's also fine. Just also Make, let him make runs and, you know, give him 
a support because if we, you know, play bio with Dennis, that's a two that should be working together and always kind of in um, in in coalition with each other. So that's what I'm saying. Let's go for it. Let's see what we can do. Uh, Leeds is going to be a tough, tough test. We know this. The Whites are, you know, really difficult, difficult customer to deal with. But with cleverly, you know, Bradford boy, hopefully uh, a few fire in the in the belly there, and uh, you know that will give him some motivation against the Yorkshire rivals to do something uh, for for the team tonight. But yeah, it'd be great to see him being at Vicarage Road as head coach for the first time in the flesh, and um, hopefully we can cause a little upset tonight. And if anything, just put a little dent in Leeds' title charge and promotion charge. Um, obviously, Leicester lost early today, so that's a massive result for them. Um, so they will be licking their lips at the prospect of opening up a bit of a points gap um, for this good Friday. We've obviously got West Brom on Monday. That's going to be another tough test because West Brom this season are looking pretty strong for a playoff spot. Um, but you never know. It could be interesting to see who get those playoff places. You know, you've got Hull, you've got Coventry, you've got the likes of, you know, possibly even one of those teams like Norwich could sneak in there. So a few teams up for grabs. We're not really in the conversation so it's just a bit how can we be a bit of a disruptor for the rest of the league but um yeah we go again next season and hopefully we'll be singing with joy after tonight score prediction Watford 2 Leeds United 1 I think we can all concede because we always do it's a it's a bit of a bold prediction because Leeds are as good as they are but I just want to see a win uh it's been a long long time since we've done that at home um, and uh, it'll be nice to get this one. Uh, I think Leeds will score first. I think it'll be Somerville with the goal. Unfortunately, uh, by accident, uh, I left Somerville as my captain in Championship Fantasy Football. So if there is one Leeds player that has to score, then Somerville, I wouldn't mind it too much. But please, I'd rather just see a Watford clean sheet and a win. However, Watford goal scorers will go for Mr. Oh, yes. In defence, it's Wesley Hoot. No, he's not playing. He's not playing. Okay, Suspended. not him then. Uh, <laughs> we'll go for uh, how about Jamal Lewis? Surely he's fit. He might be injured. Okay, all right. We've got walking wounded squad right now. <laughs> Let's say. Spring. Mm, no, we'll go for we'll go for Kone. I think Kone to get the first one, and the second one. He's also in my championship fantasy team. It's Yasser. Aspria. Da, 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 da. Come on, you horns.